Welcome to Be So Creative Tuesday Tips and Tricks at 2 on Tuesday. It's me, Sandy again. Hi guys. Welcome back to Las Cruces. If you are already in Las Cruces, welcome! <laughs> so glad you're here. If you're visiting from far, far away, welcome! So glad you're here. So a while back, one of our customers, Ann Geyer, gave us a list of things that she thought might be interesting for tips and tricks. And she had on her list the rope bowls. And I went, oh, I love the rope bowls. They're like throwing pottery, but not quite. And they're like weaving a basket, but not quite. It's kind of like the two of them get mixed together and there's a lot less hand washing involved in both of them. Only we're still in the time of COVID, so wash your hands, okay? So today we're going to do some rope bowls because I love them. They're so much fun. We are going to begin by introducing the core. So Becky, come and have a look at what's going on right here. What I have here is actually just a piping cord, um, cotton interior. You see the little woven mesh around the outside. And the purpose of the mesh is just to keep the cotton in its shape like in its, in its little core piece. You can see this one might be a little difficult to work with unless, you know, you just braid it and smooth it and pretend like it's clay. See how it's sort of like clay? Okay, the other option is to work with rope. And um, I was gonna have a big pile of rope to show you, but Marsha ordered some and I had a lot of fun and it's going to be a basket and I used it all. There's more coming, I promise. She promised she would get some more for you. And you better come get it for it quick or I might use it up again. Okay, but we are going to work with our, um, our cotton piping cording. You can see that the dimensions between the two are pretty different in terms of the size of the filling itself which just is going to give you a different feel for how the bowl is built up. Um, you want to be mindful about choosing the size of your cording so that it actually is going to fit underneath your sewing machine foot. If you get too heavy, it's going to really make things uncomfortable to work with. And on that point, I want to introduce you to my new friend. This is the Burnett 77. The Burnett 77 is um, a sewing machine only. It has a sister that's just an embroidery machine and another sister that's a combo embroidery and sewing machine. And it turns out we're becoming really good friends really, really fast. And one of the reasons we're so much so good is, do you see that? My whole finger can fit underneath there. That is a pretty fat basket coil if that's what I wanted to do. Um, Besides all of the other cool things, a lot of the features on the face are a lot like the um, higher end Berninas. They're going to operate the same as the Berninas. So if you needed a little machine to take with you to classes, this is not a bad option. In fact, it's a very good option. In fact, we're friends. Okay, so we've got our pi cotton piping cording. This one is eight and 32 seconds of an inch. That's the diameter across the cording and I want to show you how to get started. So first of all, this big fluffy bit for um, somebody who hasn't been playing with this is going to be intimidating, so we're going to cut it off. If you've played with it, there's, you know, you can treat it like um, clay and kind of smooth it in, but today we're going to cut it off and we're going to give it a little bit of an angle. We're going to set that aside and I should introduce you to tools tools for today's are the cord and some nice strips. I've cut mine at about an inch, three quarters of an inch is another good one. Um, we're going to back up just a second and I want to show you. Here is some of the cording that I've already wound and I want you to see how much raveling and fraying is happening on that. This is going to give me a more a hairy bowl, it's going to be that more rugged homespun sort of feel to it. It's also um, strips that are cut on grain. Over here, this big pile I showed you a minute ago is done on bias. Well, it's done on bias and it's batik, so it's actually kind of um, a double a double clean line. So because it's on bias, 
I get a lot less raveling. And because batik is more closely woven, it holds together better anyway. So if you're looking for a cleaner, more polished um, cording to work with, then I say go on bias. And if you want it really, really clean, go for batik. We're also gonna take just a second to talk about fabric options. So I want you to see in here, I have primarily dark with bits of bright in it. And that is made out of fabric very much like this. So we've got these pieces where you will move. So as you imagine a strip cut across it, you'll have a flick of bright and then be dark and bright again. So think a little bit about what you want the overall effect to be. When we look at this fabric, so you can see this is what it is before it got cut. Once it's wrapped around, we have a, a pretty soft undulation that goes almost monochromatic. And so Becky, I want you to come up onto the wall right here. And I want you to see this. This beautiful fabric not only makes a wonderful quilt, but this would make such a sparkly um, riot of color in terms of winding around a cord and making a basket. That one is one that I thought would be really, really fun. And Becky, can I have you zoom to the wall over here? We're looking at, um, these are <coughs> some pre-cuts that are new in the store. And the collection of the, the big 10 by 10 squares would be another really fun way to use those guys. Because again, by the time you've cut them into little tiny strips and wrapped them around, you'll sort of mix the color together a little bit more and you'll have a pretty vibrant um, bowl with little pops of colors. It's a lot of fun to play with. All right, Becky, come on back. So now that we've selected our fabric, and we have cut ourselves strips because we decided whether we wanted them to be on straight of grain or on bias, we're ready to wrap, almost. Glue sticks. These are the two glue sticks that I use the most at home. And today in the shop, I learned two great tips about the refrigerator and glue sticks, plus also your fingernail polish. Fingernail polish? Oh yeah, we're going to fingernail polish. Not on my fingers, but glue sticks. If you will keep them in the fridge, in plastic, you will prevent them from drying out because the moisture um, regulation that's happening in the fridge is going to keep your glue sticks dry, well not dry, tacky in the right way, and happy. And if you are a kind of human who really loves fingernail polish, throw those guys in the fridge because apparently that same material that keeps fingernail polish um, liquid viscous really is um, when it's cold, it won't evaporate. So you can stick your fingernail polish in the fridge and have that favorite perfect color for the next two decades, unless you use it up. Okay, so back to glue sticks. I have my, my little glue stick with the fine tip in the store. We've got the bone um, and the, oh, the bow in, excuse me, and the sew line um, fabric glue stick pens. The reason I choose this guy is because I have a better um, surface area application of that smaller glue stick. This one is an accidental discovery, the extra strength glue stick that is the board mate. Also a really great friend. It's extra tacky, but tacky in the nice way. Your best of friends. You know her. She's a little tacky, but you gotta love her. Okay, so that's the board mate. Um, extra strength. Today we're going to use the little blue, the little pen because less of it gets on my fingers when I use. So, top of the strip, supporting on the back with my finger, I'm just going to go ahead and give myself some glue right there. Back to the cord, we're going to lay it on and please notice that the strip itself is going at a bit of an angle. And I want to have enough to be able to curl over the top and wrap around the edge. So I'm going to start doing this wrap, tuck it in hard with my thumbnail, bring my top over, and that's where that little bit of glue on the inside helps me. And now I can roll it around. So hopefully my fingers are out of the way and you can see what I've got going on. And I see as I'm starting to roll that now I'm getting this angle 
going down the cord. That's exactly what I want to happen. And this is where this little friend helps hang on to things. So using the clip there, and then this first wrap or two is kind of awkward. So I just hold it between my fingers until I can get enough to grip. And then, like I said, this Burnett and I, we're starting to get good friends. I can release the clip here, put it down underneath, and this fun little Burnett has a knee lift, which in this case is a knee, is a, is a put the foot down instead of lift it up. While it's hanging on for me, I can now continue my twist. I hold the th three fingers wrapped around my cord, pull a little tension on my right hand, use my left hand index finger to flip it around, or you see my middle finger and ring finger grab, and in that way I can cover a lot of distance really quick. Do 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 do. You can sing to yourself too, you guys. That's how music and quilting get together. Okay, so down here at this end, I'm gonna just go ahead. Oh, see the selvage? Get rid of the selvage. Just, just get rid of it. And a little bit of glue again. And just wrap it on around. Okay, so that is what it takes. To start the next one, I just would put, this would be ugly on it, guys, don't do it, but that's what I have right here. Put a little bit of glue on the end, start it around, and you'll just keep on going. So when I'm getting ready for a class for you, I just keep on going and going and going. When I'm doing a class, when I'm just working on it for me, I would wrap this much then I would sew this much, and then I would wrap this much again. That's what I prefer to do. So let's show how we actually get started. We'll begin here. What kind of stitch are you going to do? Oh, we'll come on to the stitch one. in just a second. Even on the one you do? You so this one, um, we're d I don't do any stitch okay. down these wraps. I just... Um, wrap them up and then when I zigzag them together I get enough stitches caught so that everything stays right. Um, okay. right where it's at. Thank you Becky. So to begin, pivot it into till you get this little hook then tuck it in again a little harder. See how that guy's trying to lift up? Just tuck it back down and roll it like so much of a weird cinnamon roll. Do 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 do. Okay? And once you have enough, you see how it's trying to get? Uh, it's popping forward and backward. So I can just put my thumb and forefinger and that can help me roll it flat. Okay, and once I've got it there, then I'm gonna stick some pins in it straight across, bisecting this circle and that's gonna hold it for the next step. Welcome to the sewing machine. Please make sure that you have installed your 90 needle. Your 9014 needle is the one that's large enough to handle this robust exercise. If you try to use a lighter needle, you will feel sad inside and so will your machine. Alrighty, righty. Okay, so I've got this one started. You can see I have my two pins in it. And here we have a couple of design options. If we want to, we could start doing a zigzag and try to swirl it around. I did that here. It feels a lot like a little kid scribbled in the middle. It's not my favorite, but it's very functional. And given that this gigantic piece is going to turn into a laundry basket and the laundry will cover this part of it, I was okay leaving it there. The second thing we're gonna, and then I'm gonna show you the option in a minute, but while we're looking at this guy, do you see how tight these stitches are and these zigzags? Do you see how much wider they are up here? I did that just for you. I did it so that you could see the difference in the aesthetic. Both of them are structurally sound, but one has a very different look than the other. This one is going to eat up a lot more thread. 
It's a little bit more stiff as it has more body as a finished piece. This is softer, uses less thread, but also has a very, like your eye kind of blends these stitches together, but out here it's very much I have a zigzag stitch present. I also want you to see the little bit of fraying that's happening in here. This is on bias, regular cotton weight fabric. This is the knot batik. So that's an idea of what that's going to look like. Okay. So as we discussed, option one is to start with a zigzag. But what we are going to do today is we are going to start with a straight stitch. And I'm going to straight stitch right across and right across and right across and right across. And then I'll have this cute little asterisk as the beginning of my bow. And I will feel like, hey, wasn't that exciting? So one of the fun things about this burnette that I'm really, really loving is see how my hands are right here? Oh, foot goes down and foot comes back up again because I have the knee lift. Woohoo! Do not sew over needles. That is correct. Do not sew over pins. Oh, I pinned the pins to each other. Please hold. Oh, sadness. Did you guys see that? I popped it right off its head. So I got this ready for you when the glue was still soft. And you know what I think has happened? We have officially glued the pins in. So ah, today on Tips and Tricks, it will be circus time with Sandy. Wow, okay, that's a handy tip for everyone to know. You actually can glue your pins into your thing. <laughs> Aren't you glad this is live? Oh, thank you, Becky. She's going to keep us all in the store safe. Oh, yeah, <laughs> woohoo! This is one of the best places to work. The teamwork here is amazing. Okay. All right, okay. So let that be a lesson to you that um, amazing things can happen when you try new stuff. Which makes me wonder, that's pretty hard in there. We're cutting it off. Okay, and now we're, we're gonna explore what happens together if you don't even wrap the end. Okay, here we go. I think what's going to happen is a little tiny bit of that white fluff is going to show. And I think I don't care very much. If you, you care, then you should. Oh, we could take permanent marker to it, says Becky. Clever, clever people all around me. All right. Okay. Now we're going to lift up the foot. We're going to make sure that I am starting with the foot. Like I'm not all the way off the edge. I'm actually on the fabric. Are my hands in the way? a little bit and my fun friend the all okay here we go straight line let's give it so I'm at a 5.0 over here because I want a bit of a length and oh I forgot it was gonna make a knot there we go see that little jumpy thing that's a burnette thing well maybe it's a Bernina thing but it gives it a little extra force <laughs> it says and I feel so confident with it. Making that extra little effort to get through my cording and everything. Okay, right there, we're gonna go ahead and cut. I'm gonna use, whoops, knee lift. We're gonna go straight across. Dun, 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 dun. Guess who forgot the knot again? It was me. And back. <laughs> this is how you tell it don't make a knot I remembered you can tell it to go a little faster Okay, whoops, I forgot to tell it. There it goes. And last one.
Okay, so what this has done for us is begun with a little cute asterisk instead of some strange scribbly, but if you like the scribbly, go for it. Now, in order to actually begin our um, zigzag, there are a couple of things that we want to do. One is actually select our zigzag. I'm gonna go ahead and do a medium sort of length, kind of in between those two that I showed you. Um, and I'm going to take advantage of the full seven millimeters of the burnette that I have available to me. These little pieces that are here, I'm gonna cut off just so that they don't get tangled up as the machine is going through. A snarledy mess would be sad. And then I'm going to place the middle of my foot right in that little space. And as I go around, I'm just going to make sure that the zigzag is catching both sides of the rope, like so. Now, I find it easiest up here, I'm kind of grabbing with my fingernail and pushing downward. I found that when I actually tried to turn it, I was not getting as good contact here. And if I try to push this all the way over, then I start getting um, sloppy lines and my zigzag stop, start falling off my rope. Also, please use your awl instead of your finger. Here we go. I'm pulling from the top, rolling it forward. Right now, I'm a lot involved in rolling it forward, but as this circle gets bigger, I will, it'll be a pretty soft tug forward. So you can you see around top where I'm just grabbing and pulling? Okay, one of the other things we wanna do at this point is make sure that we're working flat on the table because the way we actually create a bowl shape is by lifting it up off the bed. And so if we want our bowl at this point to sit flat, that's what we need it to do. Okay. Now we got a good rhythm going. Okay, I'm holding things down. And you see again how my fingers are drawing it towards me. Okay, so working flat. You want it to start to curve? We're just gonna lift it just a tiny bit. Okay, so see, the bowl is starting to form all by itself. <clears throat> and the degree to which I can hold my bowl consistent at a consistent angle is how straight or how smooth my sides build up, and that's why it feels a little bit to me like throwing pottery throwing pots on the wheel. Anyway, so you don't have to keep watching me do this forever. We've got the beginning of things going on. And you see how we've got a fairly curved, fairly steep situation. Um, I want to show you on the big, big one how you're going to get it to go so that it starts building more like a cylinder shape. And then I'll show you how to um, okay, how to add on as needed. Oh, I forgot to mention. It's hard to tell. See where my, my stitches are? My stitches are in a variegated thread that pretty much matches what I'm doing. So they go pretty invisible, whereas this one is a higher contrast sort of situation. You're gonna see them a lot as I build 
um, this one up. Okay, so to get this guy to build cylindrically, and this is where, again, my knee lift is helping me. Okay, because I try to lift it straight up. And I just realized that this is going to be too long for you guys on the video. So we're going to do it. We're going to flip back over here because it's going to take me too long to sew around. And I'm going to see if I can go from this curve into a really, see, I can't. I have to build the bowl out big enough to get around my machine. Let's just try it. Okay, so do you see how the shape of the bowl, like we started to come out and then as I push this upward, we're starting to get the flare outward. I don't know if you can really see it. Um, anyway, the idea is if you want it to build it a cylinder, you're gonna need to make sure that your, the diameter of your base piece is big enough that you can actually roll it all the way around your machine. And so um, the Burnett and I are new friends, and so I haven't um, calibrated my old machine, had a smaller, a smaller distance in here, so I was able to get that, that cylindrical shape sooner. Um, but you can see here's where we, where we worked flat, here's where we started to curve pretty dramatically upward and then we had it pushing out against the, the head of the machine here going for this outward motion. So practice, play with what kinds of shapes that you can get um, and enjoy because it's a ton of fun. So let me show you just really quickly how to go from how to splice two pieces of rope together in case you yourself need to make a laundry basket. We're going to start with having my friend here hold the rope. And I'm gonna twist around like I showed you before. Choop, 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 until we get to the almost end. And you can see I'm about out of fabric there. So to make it easier, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that right there. I'm gonna lay a heavy layer of glue and wrap that around. I like to use my thumb at this point. And this is a situation where I just couldn't help myself. I had to keep going. So I started another piece this way um, so that I could connect it. So I've wrapped around until I'm starting to have the fabric 
extend beyond the rope. So now I've created this little cavity in there and this guy is just going to slide right in there. I'm going to hold it between fingers and thumb and continue wrapping. And because these wraps um, work layer on layer, that is going to be enough if I bump them up against each other to be able to wrap them um, into each other. And normally you would be wrapping onto plain rope, but like I said, I, I just loved it. I had to keep going. And that's, that's all it's going to take to add the extra on. And then you can just go and go and go and go. So hopefully you're just like, ah, let me try, because it is so much fun. I love it a lot. Um, and sorry we didn't get a better shaping, but I just would love for you to show me up. Send, send some pictures and things to say, I can do my bowl shape. It would be awesome. I would love it. Okay, you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.